Now let's shift our attention to the Cisco SDN controller solution designed for the campus networks, STA. SDA stands for Software Defined Access. It's Cisco's campus network automation solution. So remember, with SDN technology, the general idea is to automate the deployment of our networks. We are trying to decouple the hardware from software so it becomes a lot easier for us to onboard devices or to deboard devices. At the heart of the SDA solution is the DNA Center controller or the digital network architecture. This is the brain of the entire solution. It's an appliance that provides a centralized graphical interface to design your network, add and configure devices, monitor your network and devices, and troubleshoot your network. So it's an all-in-one single pane of glass solution. SDA manages and automates campus infrastructure that includes both the wired and wireless. So if you have a desktop computer that's plugged into a switch via an ethernet cable, that would be a wired device as compared to a wireless laptop connected to your network. SDA brings it all together under a single pane of glass for management and automation purposes. And for those of us that are familiar with APIC EM, SDA is the next generation APIC EM. You may still have APIC EM deployed in your environment today, but APIC EM has now been phased out and it has now become DNA Center. SDA is composed of three components, the overlay, the underlay, and the fabric. Now, at this point, because I just wrapped up talking about ACI. I'm sure the concept of overlay, underlay, and fabric is pretty clear in your head, but I will still go slightly deeper because the idea of how the underlay versus overlay operates is a little bit different per SDN solution. So when it comes to SDA, we have the underlay network. That's the network infrastructure. These are the physical devices within our network. That includes all the switches, routers, firewalls, wireless access points, wireless LAN controllers, all the end hosts, like the servers that are connected to our network, or the end machines that are connected to our network. And we also have the underlay control plane concept. So the control plane here being the routing protocol. In case of SDA, it's ISIS, could also be BGP, depending on the network we're trying to connect to, and the routing protocol supported by it, but that's all part of the underlay. And what we have on top of the underlay is called the overlay network, and the overlay network has its own overlay control protocol, which in this case is VXLANs. And with overlay, the idea is we have virtual machines. We have virtual switches. We have virtual constructs that we build on top of the physical infrastructure that allow us to be very flexible. And with um, an overlay tunneling protocol like VXLAN, we have the ability to carry packets within our network, even though our infrastructure is all layer three, we can still transport layer two packets over a layer three network. That's the beauty of VXLAN. And the whole idea here is the encapsulation and decapsulation of VXLAN. So the incap happens when a packet enters the network. So when the packet from this server to the left comes into this switch, the switch is going to perform an encapsulation procedure. It's going to take a packet that's coming off of either a VLAN or a trunk link that is carrying multiple VLANs and encapsulated into VXLAN. Now throughout the fabric, that packet is gonna be a VXLAN packet, but when it's ready to exit, let's say the traffic is destined for this machine right here. When this switch is gonna hand 
the packet off to this endpoint, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and remove or decapsulate the VXLAN header and look at the VLAN information and move the packet along. So as you can see, the end hosts are still speaking VLAN, but within the fabric, we have VXLAN that is transporting the packets for us. Now let's quickly look at what makes up the entire SDA solution. What are the key constructs that make up SDA? And on this slide, I'm gonna explain the fabric roles and the associated terminology. So the first device in our network, which is the key to the entire solution, is the DNAC controller. This is a physical appliance that you have to acquire from Cisco. And typically in a practical production environment, you would wanna have a cluster of three forming a quorum. So you have high availability and redundancy in your environment. And once again, this is the brain of the entire solution. This is what provides the GUI based portal that you log into. And this is where you define all the constructs necessary to configure your entire network. DNAC controller also supports northbound APIs like REST API. So if you're using tools like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, or any other automation tool of your choice to be able to program your network, whether it's spinning up switches or wireless LAN controllers or APs, it can all be automated. That's what's cool about this entire solution. Instead of touching each device hop by hop, we use a centralized model for configuring the entire network. Now, the next component is ICE, or Identity Services Engine. Now, this is very important for the SDA solution to operate because users are authenticated by ICE and the security policy is configured in Cisco DNA. SDA helps ensure policy consistency by defining and enforcing policies, preventing unauthorized access and user mobility. And another very important component of the SDA fabric is analytics engine called NDP. Stands for Network Data Platform. It's an analytical engine that collects information about networks via things like NetFlow and logging and SNMP, and it's just a centralized ingestion point for all of those monitoring slash management protocols for deep visibility into the entire fabric. And it also has a little bit of artificial intelligence and machine learning built into it. So what does AI and ML actually mean besides being buzzwords? What it ultimately means is we're trying to make our networks so intelligent that they mimic a human brain. So how a network engineer would actually troubleshoot and monitor the environment, that type of intelligence is built into the analytics tool called NDP. Next up is control plane nodes. And the control plane nodes are responsible for mapping the endpoint ID to different devices and control plane nodes use LISP protocol and, and LISP stands for location ID separation protocol. It's a really powerful protocol and this is what allows mobility to happen within the fabric where you can unplug a device from one part of the network, go to another part of the network and it can just magically come up without the network administrator or operator having to reconfigure that port but once again, this is a more advanced CCNP, CCIE level topic. I'll go into more detail when I launch the CCNP course. Fabric border nodes. Now, these nodes are at the edge of the network. And that's why they're called border nodes because they're literally sitting at the border of our network and they connect the fabric, the SDA fabric 
with the non-fabric solution. So for example, let's say you have thousand sites within your network and the very first site you decided to deploy SDA to is going to need to be able to talk to the legacy or the traditional network devices. The, this is where the border nodes come in. They have the ability to translate the fabric constructs into the old school constructs that you may have in the rest of your environment that hasn't been migrated to fully to the SDA solution yet. Then we have the edge nodes. So these are the access switches. So if I were to give you, so the best analogy I can give you here is these are like your access layer switches. And this is where the wired endpoints plug into the network. This is where the devices are onboarded into the network. And we also have the fabric wireless controller. This is the wireless LAN controller. And this is where all the wireless endpoints are terminated and controlled and managed. And then we have these intermediate nodes that are part of the underlay. You can think of intermediate nodes as distribution layer. They do not participate in the overlay but they primarily participate as an underlay, meaning they provide physical connectivity for the access layer switches to be able to connect up to the core or the fabric border nodes uh, by being intermediaries, hence the name intermediate nodes. And once again, in a traditional layer three design, we have access distribution core. This is exactly what you can think of here in this design. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.